yeah, I want to finish the chapter 7 with um, chapter 7.4. There we come back to PID T1 a controller design for digital controllers. Uh, we have prepared some methods with Z transformation and now we apply the Z transformation to our controllers. Um, let's look what we have done in chapter 6. I open page um, C, page 36. Uh, this page uh, describes our previous, our well-known um, digital PID design. I call this pizza, uh, design uh, one, uh, Romian one. We calculate the three Qs, Q0, Q1, Q2, uh, which depends on the K and the TI and the TD and the sampling time. And with this equation, we have seen we can design uh, the first good um, PID controller. This design has one main disadvantage, the step depths. Here you see the step depths we have developed. Step depths approximation is 1 plus TV divided by T0 depends mainly on the choice of the sampling time. If sampling time, sampling time is very small, the step depth is very large and this leads to a not good behavior. Uh, so we want to have a design where we can choose the step depth value independent of the sampling time. So we can make sampling time very small, but step depths not too high. Uh, the idea to do this is very simple. We um, we use trapezoidal approximation we have learned in the last chapter and apply this to our well-known border plot form of our PID T1 controller. No TN is the uh, numerator time constant number one, TV is the differentiated time constant and T1 is a ratio TV over T1 is the uh, step depth of my analog uh, PID T1. Uh, yeah, and I want to, to convert this into uh, an algorithm. Okay, I have done this manually. I put this expression for each P, so four times into this expression, and um, calculate the final result with normalized form. This takes some uh, yeah, minutes. Uh, the intermediate steps are not so interesting. I just give you the uh, resulting uh, equations. Note that uh, our controller now has a um, transfer function with z and uh, in the numerator there are still three q's but now you see in the denominator there is a new p1 and a new p2. So uh, we have now five coefficients for our PIDD1 controller and these five coefficients can, can be calculated here with these equations. Rather um, big equations, but uh, doesn't matter. Here you can see that I directly use Kr, Tn, Tv, and T1. And in each expression the sampling time appears. So this gives a new design. And this design I have uh, named with I sharp design. Romian one sharp that is a little bit better improved new generation uh, PID uh, controller now with the advantage that we can uh, select this step depths but note the step depths of the new controller cannot be larger than this value uh, this value is the largest step step value which can be uh, gained with, with this uh, conversion because this is a step depth if the uh, original step depth is infinity and this reduction from infinity to this value comes by the sampling process uh, and the same sampling process cannot make the step depth larger than this. Okay, I uh, will show you 
just an example. Yeah, these these values are programmed in my tool, of course. Uh, here we can design uh, those versions, either the design one and uh, the design uh, one sharp. Uh, and I yeah go back now to our previous example. Uh, end of chapter six. Remember, there was an example um, the, the, I look for the parameters of my k and t so I have to go back sorry for this go back to show you the position of the example I want to change now with my new z design method oh, some pages back here this is the example here uh, I want to stay with um, the 2PT1s, gain 2, one time constant is 0 0.275 and the other is 0.165. Note that this delay time block is rather large because the uh, sampling time in our uh, example uh, is uh, 55 milliseconds given in the task. Here you see 55 milliseconds. Uh, if we increase sampling frequency decrease sampling time and this uh, will be smaller and has not so big negative effect so the control system can be better my opinion is now uh, I decrease in this example the sampling time by a factor of 11 to 5 milliseconds yeah? note um, with new design design number uh, one sharp uh, according to C sharp the computer language you know this new design um, I recalculate late the PIDT1 with the 2PT1 process of chapter 6. Chapter 6. So, note we have following situation PIDT1 controller, our first PT1, same time constant, this is the original process given in the task with the two time constants 275 and 165 second, uh, milliseconds now uh, of course in the analog design we have to add the delay time block now with sampling time 5 milliseconds Real algorithm should be unchanged, and then you know the delay time block has now 7.5 milliseconds instead of 82.5 milliseconds. So, this delay time block is rather much smaller. So, we ex uh, expect a uh, um, better controller output. So, uh, this should be done. Uh, I want to stay uh, with step steps four. That was the value we get. We have got with the sampling time fifty-five millisecond. Yeah. Um, if we look for the step steps, um, design one, sampling time. 55 milliseconds step depth was 1 plus TV divided by sampling time was 4. If we get the design 1 with our new sampling time 5 milliseconds, then in this design the step depth is then 1 plus. A TV 0.65 divided now by 5 milliseconds 
um, this gives a step depth value 165 durch 5, 30, 32 uh, step depths of 32 rather large and I will show you also the resulting uh, reference step response with design one and finally I show you the design one sharp with sampling time 5 milliseconds you will see the step depth is selected to 4 yeah, so this, this is that what I want to do now this is case A, case B, case C of my chapter 7.5 result let's uh, yeah, do the design for this purpose I have started uh, the Rexy Sharp simulator I switch to English language and um, load the file we have developed in chapter 6 let's uh, just quickly check the values k is uh, 2 uh, the first process is 0.275 second pt1 has gain 1 and 165 milliseconds and the delay is uh, 82.5 milliseconds this is that what we have done in chapter 6 now the new design has to change the uh, delay time because I want to go now to uh, 50 uh, to uh, 5 milliseconds so we have then the uh, delay time 7.5 millisecond say ok and uh, so I have to redo the design I think uh, the controller design should be done with uh, just the uh, unchanged TV time step depths should be not 4 but here I have to uh, go with design 1 so the step depths then is 30, uh, 32 okay sorry for a small fault uh, the step depths here um, of the design 1 with 5 milliseconds uh, <laughs> 165 divided by 5 is 33 plus 1 is 34 sorry for this the uh, correct value here is 34 ok back to the um, program uh, so I should cancel this repeat the controller design and switch this value to uh, 34 Say OK, unchanged TV pole compensation, unchanged face margin 60 degree. So I get my PIDT1. I close the border plot window and get the values. Um, get the values um, omega D is 42. Uh, KR here is 5.9835, and the time consents and step depths is clear. So I um, write down the resulting values in our document yeah <laughs> ah. result b uh, k r the controller gain was uh, flex text uh, 598 uh, TN unchanged pull compensation and TV unchanged pull compensation and um, step depth is 34 now we do the result um, C so I will do the design, Maxi Sharp, controller design, now with OK. Uh, here this value have to be changed to 4. I want to have step depth 4 like design 1 before with 55 milliseconds. To compare the result, say OK. 
Yeah, DG1, okay. Close this window and you see the KC is 1.7256. 1.7256. Okay, KR is 1.7256. TN the same, TV the same, but now with step tabs 4. So uh, now I need the um, resulting values for the queues. How can I get the queues? Uh, result B, design 1, the queues can be calculated with uh, my PID converter. Uh, result C, I will show you, I can uh, do the same. Yeah, I can do the same. So uh, let's open the PID converter for case B. Now calculate the Q values. You can do this by hand, by hand handheld calculator, anything else. Uh, yeah, uh, I open the controller I have redone the design with step steps 34 you will see to show you how to get now the values in the PID T1 control, uh, converter here you get now the uh, KR and step steps values and of course I want to have the uh, simple uh, design uh, one and you see here um, I get the cues 108, negative 207, and 98. So I note these values and um, can play then these values in my other simulator. So uh, B, Q values are um, Q0 is 108.52 rounded, Q, uh, Q1 is negative 207.03 and q2 is 98.727 okay the same with uh, design uh, with letter c i redo the design and give you the values so I uh, open again, open the box, you see uh, on 1.7, new K for the step steps 4, uh, open the PID T1 converter and here you see the trapezoidal approach, um, one sharp, uh, here's a small error in my label, this is one sharp, uh, you see step steps is 4, the uh, values uh, can be noted now on my paper there are two P's you will see uh, which ends up in the following uh, numbers Q0 is 6.458 Q1 is negative 12306 12306 Q2 is 5.861 5.861 uh, now there is a p1 here you can say p1 is 1 it just uh, is a recursive form uh, with the coefficient 1 here is p1 1.7 8 1.7 rounded to 5 digits uh, p2 is negative 0.7838 uh, yeah and that's for this for the first step that's all we have designed now both controllers and we want to compare them how can we compare them we want to play these controllers now together with our uh, hardware our hardware simulated in our digital um, design program WinDF C sharp. So I open WinDF C sharp and set all values so that you can see what happens. What I want to do is uh, I open WinDF C sharp and I redo without video uh, recording, redo the uh, design one with 55 milliseconds so that you can see and remember the result of chapter six. 
So, I have started WinDF C Sharp. I have set the hardware simulator to a 2PT1 with our gain and uh, on both time constants. I set the sampling time to the 55 millisecond. This is the, the hardware simulator of chapter 6. And now I um, go to the uh, adaptive, uh, advanced adaptive control window. With 55 milliseconds and 50 points, we get round about two and a half second. Uh, I run this PIDT1 controller. Remember that we have seen this controller uh, in this same way in the uh, last simulation program. So I want to have a, a faster uh, response. So I repeat this task to have a better resolution in the first. Uh, Curve. So I run this, throw away the curve, say start, and here you see the um, step response uh, within around about one second. And the question is, you see, can, can it be faster? Yes, because here we have a large delay caused by our uh, large sampling time, 55 milliseconds. So now I want to show you uh, what happens if I decrease the sampling time with the same algorithm and I decrease the sampling time with a new algorithm. So I close this. Uh, before I do this I want to show you a tool in WinDF which can do the design without Rexy Sharp. Yeah, here is in controller design in this uh, window. I have not shown this. Uh, I have uh, module which is called design of digital PI and PIDT1 plus diver diverse other uh, controllers. If I open this window then I uh, can show you that this uh, window yeah first I have to set uh, to the uh, process parameters select which algorithm I want to have I want to have the real algorithm um, so I type in the process values, type process, numbers of the process, then I uh, type the uh, desired phase margin of my FAR design, uh, I add the delay time of my um, yeah, digital controller, set the sampling time, and if I click on controller design, then this program makes exactly the same what Rexy Sharp has done in the other module. So uh, behind this module, you can find uh, the original Rexy Sharp FRA design with the same results. Yeah, note we have uh, PIDT1 design one. Uh, he find out the crossover frequency, a controller gain, makes pole compensation. Step steps uh, is 4 and uh, this program calculates these values and with the OK and copy button uh, copy these controller values into my controller window, into my uh, control algorithm. Uh, but note what happens here. Uh, here's the other radio button for a P controller, PDT1, PI controller. So there are different types of controllers which are designed. In this, at the same time. So this module designs in total, see uh, here back in total, eight different controllers in one mouse click. And we can play with these controllers in my adaptive control window. Note that our design one sharp is also implemented. And uh, if we design uh, this with original 55 milliseconds, this is totally different, clear. So I have to redo the design now with 5 milliseconds. Uh, I click on controller design to repeat the design. And then you can see the uh, design one with 207. Uh, look in my um, nodes, 207 uh, or 108 is the Q0 value. Uh, Um, oh, I am uh, slightly irritated. 
what happens this is numbers so i have to check what happens the kr value is correct why are the q's different also i have to stop um that's real life i have made a mistake sorry for this i have checked it uh, i have seen this rather too late but the, the results in rexy sharp and windf should be the same i have found the error I have calculated the Q values uh, without changing the sampling time to 5 milliseconds and the default uh, sampling time in the PID converter uh, is 10 milliseconds. And of course, if I convert the Qs with a wrong sampling time, uh, then I get uh, different values. Sorry for this. So, what I have to do is now I uh, Crop this values um, corrected with five milliseconds. Sorry, so I uh, redo the conversion now for B and for C to show you that really uh, I have um, the same results independent uh, the uh, which program I use. Sorry for this mistake. No. <laughs> uh, I have forgotten to change this value. So one value changed and you give totally different uh, other values. It's, I think that normal with the problem with, with programs, uh, typing errors uh, still um, yeah, happens also in, with the teacher. So I have to go back to Rexy Sharp to sh show you uh, uh, the correct values. Uh, I have to repeat some uh, changing. This is a change of the um, C type controller. Yeah, C has a K of 1.72. Step steps four. And now I go to the PID T1 converter, and here you see the, my mistake. Here the default value of sampling time is 10 millisecond. Of course, I want to have 5 millisecond, so I have to um, go to trapezoidal design, and here you see now the five values for the P's and Q's. I, I copied these values in my OneNote uh, without recording. So the same I have done now with the uh, case B. Case B is designed. Gain was 5.98. Step step 34. Now I go to the PID converter and uh, with the changed um, sampling time with design 1 I get now the value 207, negative 404 and 197. I copy these values into my node, one node paper without recording. So you can you see uh, the values here for the KC are slightly different. The difference is not so big, but the uh, values for case B here are nearly doubled. Yeah, 207, 404. So you see uh, this sampling time error can cause big changes. Uh, now. Uh, these numbers should fit to the uh, WinDF uh, values. Same result with WinDF C sharp. That's a quick way to uh, to avoid uh, time-consuming designs in Rex C sharp. But I want to show you that the result should be the same. Sorry for my mistake. This WinDF C sharp. The menu point is controller design. Design and there you should then go to the menu point design of digital PI PI DT1. Then you get this window, and now you see uh, the coefficients fit Q0 is 207, negative 404, and so on. These are the values. You can find now in uh, OneNote corrected values and the uh, other values here for uh, the for the one sharp result. Uh, then of course also fits to that what uh, Rexy Sharp has calculated. So now we have this design in our WinDF C Sharp controller, and we can play now this uh, controllers with OK and copy, uh, closing this window. Opening the um, 
adaptive control windows behind real-time functions, adaptive advanced controllers. Here now we can check the values. First, don't forget to decrease the um, sampling time to 5 seconds. Uh, then we have, of course, more points. We want to have the same scaling. One second, round about one second. Uh, we want to play with uh, PIDT1, check the parameters 207, negative 404, these are the values. And yeah, we can run in a process. Um, wait, uh, note that if I change the sampling time, normally it's not a problem, but my hardware simulator has to be uh, adapted to this new sampling time. So before I can run this, I have to reopen the hardware simulator. And the hardware simulator now has uh, the copy of the sampling time, but the uh, A's and B's with which the system works are not adapted to my a new sampling time so this button is important these are the A's and B's the uh, controller uh, really C and now I go back to my adaptive window and I can now run the uh, case B design one uh, controller with uh, our uh, smaller sampling time you see Okay, here the, the controller is faster, uh, but there is a rather big overshoot, nearly up to uh, 12 or 13 percent, and this takes uh, some time to reach the final value 1. Yeah? Note the desired value is 1, and here the blue curve starts later, but reaches the final value a uh, little bit more earlier. So this is not a good design. This has something to do with the fact that the um, Q0 is 200. We add, in the first moment, note what we have done. In the first moment, uh, the unit step function with amplitude 1 uh, goes directly through uh, the controller and is multiplied in the first sampling time with your Q0 value. So the controller want to have 207 volts. But here you see a standard, uh, standard property of this controller is the uh, output is limited to 10 volt. That is the normal way. You can change it by deactivating and activating back then you get some uh, voltage fields. So uh, the standard uh, way is uh, because it's absolutely normal, the DICs cannot more than 10 volt uh, have at its uh, outputs. So we activated a limitation. That's a nonlinear effect. This program works with this nonlinear -linear case, and uh, the, the first impulse of 207 volts is just a cut to 10 volt, so it has no real acceleration effect. That we want to see now with uh, our. A free PID that is uh, the uh, PID with our um, design one sharp method case C in my uh, demonstration here uh, designed for five milliseconds. Now I uh, run this in a process to set it to zero, start the simulation, and then you can see. Uh, a reference step response which has here an overshoot less than 10%, 8%, then very fast settling to 1 volt. So, this is much faster, much better than the design one method. So, that is a demonstration that is uh, worthful to have a method where you can select the step depths to better values than you get. Or the design one and uh, I think this is a good demonstration to do this uh, and show, show this effect.